welcome everyone. This is uh, another research and tech talk in our series. I'm Mark Lester, the Vice President for Research and Technology at NAP. I'm excited to have you join a recording of my talk with Drs. Walter Ecton and Sean Dougherty, authors of a recent paper called Heterogeneity in High School Career and Technical Education Outcomes. A quick bit of housekeeping just before we get started. I want to let the audience know that these conversations are recorded and posted to social media after they take place. So I hope you'll go and visit NAP Research and Tech LinkedIn page for a link to this recording if you have uh, or want to rewatch or share with someone you think would be interested. A search on YouTube will also get you there if you go to youtube.com slash NAP Career Acads. It'll also get you access to all of our research and talk. Uh, research and tech talks in a playlist there. Uh, I hope you go and share them with a colleague. Uh, welcome, Sean, Walter, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here, thank you. So I wanna jump right in. The two of you have a lot of career and technical education research experience and this paper includes a lit review that I think does a really good job getting folks up to speed. Can you narrate that section a bit? And from your view, Sean, tell us what's most important about what we're learning from CTE research recently and how it's helping structure a clearer narrative. It's been super exciting to me, the growth in research and CTE over the last two decades. And a lot of that has been really in, squarely in the last 15 uh, years or so in terms of published research. And, uh, you know, in 20 years ago, at the outset of some, some of this, so there's been some longstanding research that sort of suggested CTE and vocational education tended to benefit student transition to the workforce directly after high school. Um, and, and that was kind of the, the, the focus of it, right? That CTE could build skills, those skills were good for the workforce entry. Um, and, and in fact, you saw those payoffs in, in the workforce right away. Um, more recent research still backs that up, but also has taken a more nuanced approach, I think, to really investigating the different dimensions of, of kind of how and where CTE might benefit students. And so that includes thinking about innovations and in models of CTE delivery, including the academy model and whole school models of CTE, um, thinking about, uh, you know, the different settings in which CTE uh, is happening and and you know so over subscriptions some lottery based admissions um, have created opportunities to get even stronger answers to the question like what is the benefit uh, of CTE or participating in CTE in high school so uh, the more recent evidence some of which has been focused on oversubscribed career academies and some whole school models of CTE that exist mostly in the Northeastern United States, Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, New York City. The models exist in New Jersey, but haven't been evaluated, um, but, but are finding that not only do students benefit in the workforce in the, let's say, up to seven to 10 years after uh, high school. Um, however, we, we also see benefits uh, to, to students um, on their test scores in, in high school, uh, in some instances on their attendance in high school, students are, are relatively more engaged in, in their schooling experience. Um, and uh, in some instances, transition to, to post-secondary education. So we've gotten a little further under the hood uh, uh, there as well. Yeah. So uh, just to make sure that I'm clear, and I'm gonna, this is a, uh, a, a follow-up to that question. I'm about to jump into the most uh, this, this paper, which I'm going to link to in our notes for this recording. Um, I'm excited to talk about that. I do want to make sure that it's clear to folks, especially in the NAP network, that uh, the data reflected in this paper tell us how a model like NAP's, where it's a career academy, it may or may not be in a, uh, a where CTE is, is sort of the whole school model, how does that factor into the data you all collected for this paper? So the, the data for this paper come from the Massachusetts uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, their administrative data system. 
And, and so it's all been pre-collected as part of the standard uh, data processes. It, it, they've linked it to the National Student Clearinghouse data to, to look at college going and completion and then have an agreement with the Department of Labor and the state to share the unemployment insurance records that allow us to see earnings and employment uh, over time. Um, that said, uh, some time ago, I had a conversation with Nick Miner about the academy model existing in, in Massachusetts. And to date, we haven't looked specifically about schools that employ the academy model. So I would say our results are inclusive of comprehensive high schools that have embedded academies as part of the experience, but we right. don't call them out se separately in this paper. Um, yeah, and I think I was just going to say, and I think uh, that's good clarification, I think, for folks. Um, but also, I'll, I'll add to that that I think the themes of um, the findings here are absolutely uh, relatable and relevant, should resonate for anyone who's working in the space of um, sort of work, workforce, uh, career education, career and technical education. Um, I think that there's a lot here that, that can generalize over quite a few different um, environment. You know, there's some important statements about career and technical education in the paper, and I wanted to just ask you to give us a headline version of the message that if we're talking to parents of CTE students, you would hope they leave this interview with, if nothing else. So, so I, I would I would say the big picture takeaway from my perspective is that we've looking at a statewide system operating at scale uh, across a lot of different school districts and a lot of different programs of study. We find that on average, students who participate in CTE across two or more years of their high school experience tend to see benefits. Um, immediately after high school. And those benefits show up in two clear ways. Um, one is in a higher uh, likelihood of getting a job and, 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 and keeping that job right after high school and earning more money in that job and considerably more money depending on the, the program of study, especially in the skilled trades, uh, auto mechanics in particular for, for, for males. Um, and uh, the second is, uh, you know, some pathways lead to a higher likelihood of getting into college and, and enrolling in college right after. And, and it sort of splits out in ways that you might expect. So if you're pursuing a, a, a plumbing pathway, you're likely to be in the workforce and earning considerably more money than your otherwise similar peers. Um, but if you're in a health sci science pathway, you might be in the workforce, but you're also more likely to go into enroll in a community college and, and likely pursue an aligned program of study in the community college uh, relative, again, to otherwise similar peers who, who might have that interest but didn't do CTE while in high school. Um, so so ben benefits to college going and college aligned pathways and then to higher earnings and, 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 and employment for, for di direct uh, workforce entry programs. Yeah, and, and Mark, if I could add just one more headline that I think is is, is important here. I think for, for a really long time, there's been debates about CT versus not CT. You know, is CT a good thing? Does it lead off to, to, to positive benefits for students? And I think one of my takeaways from, from this research was that that's really the wrong question to ask. And instead, really, the question is, well, what type of CT are students taking? You know, is it a really high quality CT program that is leading to positive outcomes for students? So, you know, if I were talking to a parent, one of the things that I would ask them and, and to do is to go and really investigate you know, what is going on in the specific pathway that your student is looking at and, and ask teachers and ask graduates of that program, what are, what are they doing afterwards uh, and what is that looking like? Because I think it, it is it is pretty clearly evident from, from this research and from a lot of other research that's out there that there are really high quality CT programs and there's there's CT programs that don't really lead to high quality outcomes. So that's, that's really what I would be uh, thinking about a lot for, uh, as a parent or, or a student also. Yeah, we love, I find, as a field, as a country, certainly as parents, that binary of like, yeah. is it good or is it bad? Is it the right decision? Is it the wrong decision? And at the end of the day, uh, it seems that thematically across so many different landscapes, not just the CTE research landscape, the, the answer to that question is, who's your child? What are you trying to achieve? What are they trying to achieve? Uh, what's the environment you're coming through? All of these <laughs> these things that you know add variables that are really really important. So there's it's it's not a binary system so much as it is 
understanding nuance. And that's what um, you two as authors have brought in this paper, which I think is so important about it. Um, so let's get into that difference a little bit, right? The heterogeneity is in the title of the paper, which is obviously, um, you know, a fun, a fun word to tweet. Um, you know, it, it, it trends very quickly. So, um, well, I was hoping that you would walk us through a, some, some of those figures just to illustrate a little bit about how career programs vary among different student populations. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, so I'll share a few, uh, just a few of our, our, our takeaways here uh, that, that hopefully will illustrate some of the big takeaways. Um, so if, first off, one of the things that we wanted to really understand was how do outcomes differ for students uh, by which program that they go into? And so what we have here in Massachusetts, there's, there's 10 different career clusters. So we have healthcare, education, IT, arts and communication, business, agriculture, hospitality, engineering, manufacturing, construction, and transportation. Um, and what we have here is the, the earnings trajectories of students in their first seven years after they graduate from high school. Um, and we've broken this out by, by four different groups of folks. Uh, so the orange lines that you see here, uh, the orange lines are students who are not going to college. And the dotted orange lines are students who are not going to college, and they're also not doing CT when they're in high school. The orange lines that have the the kind of the the, the um, uh, firm line here, the solid line, uh, those are students that don't go to college, but they do go to CTE. Uh, and so what you'll notice here is that, that in every single one of these career clusters, for students who aren't going to college, the students who do CTE are doing a little bit better. So they're earning, uh, you know, a bit more and, and, and that those earnings kind of persist. And in some cases, they actually get quite a bit larger. So you see, you know, that that solid orange line uh, in some of these clusters is quite a bit larger. So for students mm -hmm. not going to college, uh, CT seems to be a really nice way to protect against some, some lower earnings, at least in the first seven years after high school. And then in the blue lines, we have students that do go to college. And, and what you notice here is that for the most part, the CT students who go to college are earning relatively similarly uh, to students who don't, uh, uh, do, uh, don't do CT, but uh, do go to college. You know, there's some differences in some different areas, but for the most part, pretty similar. But one thing that I think is really interesting is especially in some of the trades, so engineering, manufacturing, construction, transportation. Uh, in those cases, the students who don't go to college but do CT actually look more similar in their earnings by seven years out to the students that do go to college. So, you know, for these students, CT seems to really be putting them on a different trajectory for their earnings. And I think that that um, is, is, is useful. Um, I'm going to just scroll down to another couple figures here. Uh, so the next one that we'll take a look at is, you know, one thing that you might wonder is, well, uh, is that just because different types of students are selecting into different types of programs? Uh, yeah. And so maybe the CT students that go into construction were students who were always going to have higher earnings early off in their careers, sort of regardless of what happened to them in high school. And so what we do here is we put this in a regression based framework where we try to control for really everything that we know about students. Uh, so we know, uh, for example, what was their what were their test scores when they were in eighth grade? Sort of what is their academic potential and, and preparation? We know uh, where they live. We know what school they're at. So what, what are the options that they have available to them for CT, uh, race, gender? All of these things that we know tend to be predictive of um, of students earnings uh, later in life. And so here what we're able to do is see, you know, if we take two students who are similar in all the ways that we can observe, but one of them is a CTE student and one of them is not a CTE student, it, what is the advantage in terms of earnings for CTE students? Um, and again, we're going to do that for the first seven years after high school. Um, and this, this uh, kind of solid bold line here represents no difference. So there's no advantage to CTE there. And what you'll notice is that really across the board, um, almost all of these, uh, these estimates show that there's, there's an advantage for CTE students compared to similar non-CT students. So if we take healthcare, for example, in the upper left-hand corner, um, what you'll see here is that there's this kind of slow growing advantage. And by seven years after high school, uh, the CTE students are earning about $5,500 more per year uh, than similar non-CT students. So a pretty substantial um, amount there. Um, it, also, if you take a look again, sort of at the more traditional trades, manufacturing, construction, transportation, 
uh, some really, really strong advantages uh, for, for students there. So CT seems to be really making a difference in those clusters. Um, some of the, the clusters, though, you know, there's not as much to recommend them uh, in terms of the, their earnings. So arts and communication, agriculture, hospitality, these students have a, a, a slight advantage, but but a pretty modest one. There's not as much uh, there's not as much there. And, and one of the things that we, we talk about in the paper is one potential reason for that is in some of these fields, like, for example, healthcare, there's a really clear pathway to know, you know, what exactly what job are you going to get after this? What is the pathway to go on and go back to college and get more advanced degrees to to take that next step in your nursing career, for example? Um, whereas that might not be as much the case in arts and communication. It might be a little bit harder for students to find their path there. And then one other one that I'll share with you that I think is interesting, and especially will be uh, will be interesting to the NAF uh, 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 folks, uh, is here where we, we break this out by uh, what are the advantages that we see for CT in comprehensive school uh, high schools uh, where CT is just offered as electives. Uh, as opposed to the CT dedicated high school, which is that whole school model uh, that they have in Massachusetts. Um, and so in the red dots, you'll see this is the advantage that we see for students in that whole school model. Um, and, and what you notice here is that across the board, there's advantages in the comprehensive high schools to being a CT concentrator, but the advantages are, are quite a bit stronger uh, in the whole school model. Um, so we, you know, we see much larger uh, ad advantages and returns for them and their earnings. And, and that seems to actually also be growing over time, um, the, the, the advantage in the whole school model. And one thing, and, and Sean could talk more about this, but one thing that is 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 definitely true in the whole school model is that it's just a more intensive version of CT. You, you get a lot more exposure uh, to CT there. There's there's a lot of investment, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of quality checks to make sure that these are really high quality programs that are being invested in. So uh, I think that this is some indication of like quality matters um, and intensity uh, uh, seems to matter as well. John, can I uh, pivot to you a little bit? I was um, hoping you could talk just a little bit about the difference between uh, male and female students and what you found in the data. Sure, and I'll, I'll add uh, that in addition to what, what I'll talk about here in, in, in this paper, we find similar differences in other ongoing work in the state of Connecticut where we're studying a state that has a similar structure, a whole school models of, of, of CTE where, where they're very popular and students are applying to get in, but the, the schooling structure is also very similar. Um, and, and we find similar patterns of both uh, outcomes and participation that, that, that tend to be pretty gendered. And I think mirror uh, most of the, the country, frankly. Um, and so we, we do find that on average, both males and females are, are benefiting from CTE participation. And as Walt just laid out, that the heterogeneity that shows up across career cluster um, also is sort of mimicked by, by, you know, between males and females. I think the key point is that there's highly gendered participation in, in programs, in particular career clusters, right? And, and so healthcare, education, tend to be 80% enrolled by female students, whereas <clears throat> IT, construction, manufacturing, transportation um, tend to be 80% male. And then you have others like uh, business, agriculture, um, that, that tend to be closer to, to gender parity. But uh, so, so I think the, the big, big gender story is that there's big differences in, in the programs that, that folks participate in based on whether they're identified in the data as male or female. And then that translates into differences in outcomes that are largely a function uh, of selection into or into that pathway and the aligned occupations. So for instance, healthcare and education tend to be more modestly rewarded in terms of higher wages in, in the first seven years after high school that we can observe folks. Um, they're still getting paid hot more on average and are more likely to be employed, um, also more likely to enroll in aligned uh, programs, especially in community colleges, um, but, but there's just less of a financial payoff, but we know that about those programs compared to transportation, transportation manufacturing, construction and skilled trades, the payoffs are really large, but students in those pathways are far less likely to enroll in college. And, and so I, I think what we see uh, is 
the gendered patterns of participation in the United States workforce that we observe kind of in aggregate tend to get replicated, at least in the in the data that we see here in terms of gendered patterns of sorting into into clusters and programs of study. And, and, and then the sort of pay, payoffs in terms of workforce outcomes and college going follow those patterns. Well, can you say a little bit about which career clusters within CTE show positive associations with higher earnings and post-secondary success? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just going to share one more figure here that I think lays that out nicely. So, so here we, we, we've taken a look. There's sort of two big picture dimensions that we looked at. And we know one is we would hope that CTE might increase earnings. And then two is that we would hope that CTE might also increase college going. Um, and so here we're laying out, you know, how does it do on those two different metrics? Um, so in the sort of bottom left quadrant, that would be if CT was was doing poorly in both of those metrics, which there's nothing in that quadrant. So that, that that's good news. Good news. Um, you know, up here in the right hand quadrant, this is where we're seeing, you know, a, an increase in the likelihood of attending college and also an increase in earnings. So like healthcare, for example, is 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 looking pretty good on both of those metrics. Um, over on the, the left hand upper quadrant, so these are, are clusters where students are earning a lot more and, and these are the highest paying uh, uh, earning returns here. So transportation and construction, but these students are much less likely to go to college than we would otherwise expect based on their test scores, based on their demographics, where they live, where they go to school. And I think, you know, we certainly know that uh, that education is really important and higher education is really important, especially for career growth uh, later in your career. And so one of the things that we might worry about is, you know, we only have earnings data for the first seven years after high school. Right. Um, what might happen to a construction student who has a really high paying job early in their career, you know, where they're still physically fit and they're still able to do a lot, you know, later in the career, if they're not going to college, they might have less flexibility and, and, and we might be concerned about what that might look like for them down the road. So, you know, for, I think that this is an interesting one where it's like, you know, do we look at this and do we think, wow, there's a lot to recommend transportation and construction or or is there not? Like that's that, that that's a hard thing to think about and different people might come to, to reasonable conclusions about that. Um, and one, one other thing that, um, uh, that I, I would just share here is, you know, I think that it's important for us to think about how can we um, how can we also provide opportunities for students who might otherwise struggle early in their career to get on solid footing. So, you know, even if these transportation and construction students are less likely to go to college, and that might lead to some diminished earning re returns later in life, if they're able to start off their career um, in some solid financial uh, footing, that might be a, a good place for them to start and, and lead yeah. to um, some, you know, less likelihood of things like poverty and uh, and, and uh, disengagement from the economy. Yeah. If, if I may, I might just add, Mark, to, to, to that, that, that um, young men in particular over the last 50 years have become less and less likely to engage in the formal workforce or to stay engaged and, and, and have also uh, now much less likely to go to college than their otherwise similar uh, female peers. And, and, and so uh, in any case, even though we don't know the medium to long-term implications, right, that, they, that these like initially really high uh, differences in earnings early on, even if those go to zero, right, like no, no better than otherwise similar peers it, in, at 15 or 20 years after high school, um, they're probably substantially better than than you know students who didn't graduate from high school or don't didn't start with that sort of skill set and and work experience profile. We can't say that conclusively, but when we think about like what's the alternative, uh, we know that the alternatives, especially for young males, tend not to be great, uh, especially for students who are selecting into um, some of these programs. And, and so it's worth highlighting that even if we don't know what the you know if those payoffs persist. So the findings suggest a need for a nuanced approach to CTE that takes into account the diverse needs and goals of students in different programs. And I was hoping each of you could help me like uh, illuminate this in a different way a little bit and give, give some examples. So can you describe the negative outcome of not following this advice versus the better scenario of focusing on this nuance? Like what would be, uh, what would a more nuanced approach look like? Um, and And what are the, uh, help us balance a little bit the what that looks like in real practice. Walt, you want to go ahead? 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I think one thing that that I would think about for students is and thinking about advising students also about what types of programs to take uh, would, would be thinking about sort of in research, we think about the the, the, the term counterfactual, you know, what would students yeah. being otherwise if they weren't otherwise doing CTE? Yeah. And I, one thing that, I, that that strikes me about some of our findings here is we, we didn't talk about this today, but uh, there, there's stronger earnings for students who are performing more poorly uh, in school. Uh, so students who are have lower test scores, um, you know, Sean also mentioned uh, men who are struggling in a lot of ways um, as they're entering the workforce. And so one of the things that I think that that was one of my takeaways is for students who are really struggling with academics um, and if they're uh, if they're you know they weren't taking CT they would have been doing study hall or they would have been dropping out CT like is is a good thing for those students I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll uh, say, state that uh, as, a, as something that I feel pretty strongly about for students who if, if they weren't going to be taking CTE classes they would have been in AP or IB classes you know that that, that gets to be a harder set of trade-offs uh, for students so um, so that's something that I would think about. You know, what is the trajectory of this student's uh, high school into college and career life look, look looking like, and like how can CT play a role in in their pathway and supporting them uh, where they are? And that that's going to look different for for every student. And if we try to put every student into a particular uh, path, that that's not necessarily going to lead to the best outcomes. And and I'll I'll just add that that you you know. Even if we see on average these things are paying off to, to Walt's point, the like what what's the alternative for this particular student and what it what is it that they want to do? Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's great to highlight higher wages. It's great to hi highlight higher likelihoods of going to college um, or, or at least to manage the trade offs between those two. But I think we also want to be developing uh, a population of folks who are feel pretty happy about the choices they've made in life, are, are doing work that they find like satisfying overall, given the number of hours we all have to invest in our, our paid work. Um, and, and, and so I, th I think, you know, helping folks navigate that too, being realistic about the likelihood of getting a job, what it will pay, what other training it will require, but, but also letting people make choices about uh, or informed choices about what they want to do um, and, and creating those opportunities, especially for adolescents where, where you know, formative development is still very much uh, focal in their experience. 100%. Uh, I have a last question that I'm hoping to fit in. Um, I know, you know, if you have a hard stop, please, by all means, uh, if, if we lose you, I'll keep going with whoever can stay on. Um, I want to talk just about the community ecosystem, right? And there were some findings here related to poverty and disengagement specifically. And so my question is, what do we know so far about how CTE and career programs work to offset those challenges in a community ecosystem? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a great question. So we um, we, we do look at, at both disengagement com uh, completely from both the workforce and from uh, from education. So I think that probably one of the worst possible outcomes for a student who's around the age of 20 or 21 is if they're not in education or training or a job yeah. um, that puts them on a pretty bad footing. And, and we find that there's uh, taking CT does a really nice job. And I'm, I'm uh, trying to find the exact figure, and I'm not I'm not finding it as I'm scrolling here. Uh, but uh, CT does a, a, a pretty nice job in reducing the likelihood of, of students being completely disengaged, which again just sets them up in a in, in a really bad place. Uh, so for students who were really worried about in those ways, I think CT is a really powerful tool. Um, and one thing that that I'll just add with that is. You know, as CT has been really trying to be more more rigorous, more academically rigorous, more uh, more STEM focused, um, something that that I, I have my eye on, and I know a lot of folks do, is how do we make sure that we aren't crowding out students that can really benefit the most uh, from CT okay. uh, is something that I think is really really important. So, you know, given that in my mind one of the biggest uh, benefits uh, that we find is a decrease in poverty, uh, a decrease in, in disengagement from both the workforce and, and education. Um, I, I think we need to make sure that we're keeping opportunities open for, for those students uh, to be able to continue to engage with CT. Sean, last thoughts yeah. on that? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll add, uh, though I'm in full agreement with all of Walt, what Walt just said. Um, 
that I think the what we see as increased interest in CTE, especially among high school age youth, as the kind of scale of offerings and, and, and variation in the content of offerings that fall under the umbrella of CTE. So including he- health care, IT, more computer applied computer science, some advanced like you know engineering programs um, have have started to change people's conceptions of what's included. Uh, you know, green green jobs uh, under CTE. In my mind, that's an exa- providing a proof of concept that there is a way of creating a secondary educational experience that can be more engaging, and, and that that you know we should probably be doing more more of this in response to uh, st- student interest, and and as Walt suggested, make sure that it doesn't become a scarce commodity where people are getting crowded out, um, because that'll have it has the potential to have a really discouraging impact, and and again, adolescent aged youth are in particularly sensitive to to the negative impacts of that. Yeah, yeah, and one just quick thing that I, that I'll add, Mark, is uh, we we're looking in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, I know that you you mentioned a community ecosystem, and uh, I think. Uh, this might not look the same in every community. There might be different clusters that might be uh, really in demand and really be looking for students. And so I think it's important for folks to think about what what might this look like in our local community to set our students up uh, here in our community. Yeah, there there are um, a few interesting studies that were published by the Research Alliance for the City of New York. Um, uh, uh, among those researchers, Jim Kempel, who has done so much work in this space, and and uh, many of these projects have a lot a lot of debt to that early work. Um, there's been some interesting stuff published recently. If folks want to dig more into that and look at what the effects of um, you know sort of like crowding the CTE space. Uh, in a particular one particular city in New York, in this case, you can take a look at some of that work, and I'd be happy to link to the alliance in the show's notes. But in the meantime, um, Walt, I want to thank you and Sean so much. I know Sean had to jump so that he can fund his next next project, which is yep. uh, you He's know, a busy man. <laughs> hey, look, um, I'm which it, it it makes me so grateful to get to spend the time with both of you and. I hope that uh, while this is really just a taste of the work, this conversation has been kind of uh, maybe maybe one layer deeper than surface. I hope it motivates folks to check out the paper and uh, and take some of these messages and use them to think about uh, programs and decision making in the context of the work they do wherever you are in the field of career and technical work and uh, improving impact for young people and educators. So, uh, Walt, thank you so much. And and Sean, uh, we are really, really grateful for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Mark. I really appreciate it.